What up, what up, welcome back to the channel. I'm Old IJ and we are locked in. This is day three of covering cross on Amazon Prime, and this episode three is called The Good Book. Now we're gonna go through this recap, and what we know from episode one and two is Alex Cross has more work on his plate than we've ever seen. I'm talking about this man doesn't get a chance to enjoy life because every day is new evidence and these crimes, they're not slowing down. It's one thing after another. But before we jump into this and we break down episode three, if you like this kind of content, mystery, thriller, crime, drama, all of the above, then Cross might be for you. Hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. Now for Alex Cross, he's working a little bit harder than we are and this is day three. So let's jump into it. This is the recap of episode three, The Good Book. We start off episode three with a junkie by the name of Brenda. Now she's in here and she's taking this to the head. We're not too sure who Brenda is or what Brenda has going on. But one thing you know when that glass pipe is out and some aluminum foil in a match or a lighter, then you know that they're up to no good and they're not trustworthy. And these are the worst type of people to be around. Today makes the one year anniversary of Maria passing. Now we see Cross getting dressed and he's just thinking about his wife and how Maria used to come in here, help him get his tie and everything together because he's going to go down to her grave site and put these flowers down there and talk to her. But he has Maria on his mind. It's heavy. I can only imagine. Now I haven't had anyone that close pass away to me. I did have my sister in 2021. So that's probably the closest person that I've ever known that passed away. So I do think about my sister often. So I understand why his wife is still on his mind, especially fresh in that first year. Now, when he gets down to the actual burial site, he can't actually go through the gate. It's just too much for him. So what he does is have John take the flowers to his wife's grave for him. This is tough. Give him some time and he'll maybe be able to go down there and talk to her. Now, everyone at the house, they let him go and do this one on one. But John was there to be his support. At the end of episode two, we seen what Ed did to Shannon. He got her that fentanyl, which was in the hand sanitizer. And now that same place that Amir Goodspeed was, she's in that same chair. Now he has a face mask on her and he's telling her that he's going to change her hair to blonde because he's trying to match her up with the woman that was in that book, i.e. the good book. We also know that there's people with tattoos that match the signal, the symbol that was on the actual book. So when she wakes up, she's nervous. She doesn't know where she's at. This guy, Ed, he's deranged. Cross goes down to talk to the judge because he's trying to get a warrant. Now, the judge is saying, why hasn't this accidental overdose or suicide been turned into a homicide? And Cross is saying, you know why they won't do it. And that was put on the case before I took over. But what he's trying to do is get a warrant to 41 Price Street because all of these murders are connected together. Amir Goodspeed, Tavio, and then Vanessa. All of them are connected to each other. And the recording that Vanessa sent to herself was a phone call between Amir and Tavio talking about 41 Price Street. Now, the judge is saying, I can't give you a warrant right now because that's not enough to go off of. But Cross, he isn't going to give up. Cross leaves the judge's office because he couldn't get that warrant, but he knows all of these are connected and he needs to figure out what's going on at 41 Price Street. Now, the woman we seen in the beginning of the episode, Brenda, she's following around Cross and it looks like she got that thing on her because someone has instructed her to get rid of Cross. There was a letter that she got that says you need to get rid of this Alex Cross, but she gets an opportunity, but it's shut down because other police officers get on this elevator. And Alex Cross is lucky to survive another day. After Alex gets off the elevator and survives this attempt that Brenda was trying to put on him, the assistant comes up and saying, hey, 41 Price Street, there's a lot of history. Now, whoever owns this, they're trying to hide it because it's up under a name and then up under a company in Nevada. But we get a little bit of history about 41 Price Street. It used to be the Egyptian embassy. Prior to that, it used to be a bank. Prior to that, it used to be a brothel called Blue Alley. And Alex is thinking, okay, what information do you actually have? Give me some information. That's not enough. The history doesn't help me out at all. Now, John and Alex, they meet up. And what they're meeting up about is, remember the scarf? Well, there was some DNA in there. There was a hair sample. But John won't give Alex the name 
of who that sample matches to until he schedules an appointment with a doctor to seek some help because he wasn't even able to go put the flowers down on his wife's grave. So he calls the doctor. Hey, and he changes up his voice. You know how it is. Hey, what's going on? This is Dr. Cross. Yeah, is the doctor in? I'd like to schedule an appointment. When's her next available time? What is the name, John? Because he wants to know who had this scarf and whose DNA is in this scarf. But he gets a name, and it's somebody he wouldn't expect it to be. Alex gets the name, and as I mentioned, it's someone he wasn't expecting it to be. Now, this is the ADA Susan. He pulls up on her, and he's like, listen, I know we had a rocky past, but someone broke in my house and put a scarf in there, and it had your DNA in it. Now, remember, she mentioned the suspension. She said, John told on you, but they said it was going to be a quiet suspension, but you're still working. He's like, I'm not trying to hear none of that. There's some explaining to do because why did someone break up my house with that scarf and your DNA is in it? Now, right now, she's confused because she's just as shocked as we are. Now, Bobby Trey, he loves Cajun food. He loves that down south food. And well, while he's over here ordering, Ed gives him a call. And he lets Ed know the judge didn't give Cross the warrant to 41 Price Street. but Cross isn't going to give up. Now, Ed, he's still preparing Shannon so he can make her look exactly like this other woman who is a serial killer. So he's about to bleach her hair, dye it blonde. We hear what Bobby is talking about. and He's like, listen, give it up. Get out of there. Because he knows that Cross isn't going to give up. He used to be a police officer. And word on the street is Cross never backs down. Back in the office, Alex and Susan are trying to figure out, okay, if my DNA was on that, what is the connection between us two? But then she mentions that her dog was unalive. And now they're thinking about any case that they had working together. Susan brings up there was a case by the guy named Jerry Cooper. And he was about to get a life sentence, but it got knocked down to a lewd act. And he said that Alex Cross, you ruined his life. So this is a case that they worked on together. And they're figuring that this is why her DNA was in the scarf because they both work together and they ruined whoever Jerry Cooper is. Of course, you know, everyone is trying to solve this case. The chief, she's not trying to hear it. There's another detective saying that Amir was killed by one of Tavio's associates. This is just a drug deal that gone bad. Now, John's in here saying this isn't what happened. We've been collecting evidence. If you want to go out there and just say that two brothers and a, a sister got killed by drug dealers, just to close this up, well, that's wrong. But the chief says, that's it. I don't want to hear anything else. This is what it is. So they're sticking to, this is just drug deals gone wrong. Just gangbangers in the streets. Now, Ed is down here and he's bleaching Shannon's hair. He's trying to get her prepared because when he starts unaliving her, like he did Amir and everyone else that he had in that book, he wants her to look exactly like the serial killer. Now, he's very, very weird and he's telling her, I'm not doing this to you. I'm doing this with you. So with this new report, John gives it to Alex and he's saying, man, they didn't wrote up some BS. But what Alex does is he looks at this report and he's like, wait a minute, 41 Price Street? They're saying that this is drug related? Hmm. So he takes it over to the judge. Now the judge, he reads over this and he's like, wait a minute, Alex. I just told you I couldn't give you a warrant. But he's like, hey, I'm not going there looking for anything to do with murders. I want a warrant to search the house for drugs. So the report that they put out actually helped Alex finally secure a warrant. The judge signs off for it, and we're headed over to 41 Price Street. Ed is almost complete with Shannon. The only thing is, he wants this to be picture perfect. When he looks at Shannon, he starts to look at her neck and on her shoulder, and he's like, what the hell is this? Well, it turns out she has a rash. Now, I'm not sure what this rash comes from, Maybe it's the products that he's putting on her, but she does say she has a condition. So she just gets rashes all over her body. And he is upset because he wants this to be perfect. He wants her to be identical to the serial killer that's in his book. Now, Bobby Trey does call and says, Ed, they got a warrant. They're about to come and search 41 Price Street. He's like, I'm going to leave the door wide open. I already cleaned this place up. Buddy is saying, man, you just need to get out of there. The hell what you talking about? So he's downstairs watching the surveillance camera because they're here looking for drugs. 
That's what the warrant is for. Now, if they find something else accidentally, okay. But Ed is confident that the house is clean. Now, everybody's bucking at each other. Shauna comes in. She's the one that said 41 Price Street was a hub for drugs. So she's talking to Samson. What? You didn't find nothing? No homicide? No, no weapons? He's like, we didn't find any drugs. But the lieutenant is here, and she's like, hey, both of y'all shut up. Let's be professional here. We came in here. We didn't find anything. Let's get on out of here. Wrap this up. A lot's been going on for Alex. So what he does that evening, he gets him some wine. He sits down and turns on the radio. This is the radio station him and his wife used to listen to. And he, he actually makes a request. And then he starts talking to him like, yeah, I got two beautiful kids. He isn't here with me. She used to love listening to this. And it's just a lot built up on him. And he, he wants to make the best of the situation. Sometimes you have to talk through your pains and your struggles and your your thoughts. And this is what Alex is doing right now. Even though these are good memories, it still hurts, but he needs this. After he gets done on the radio, Samson shows up and says, we have a lead on that car that was sitting out front. It's actually linked to this building. So they go over there. Now we see Alex is in the back. He's walking through these little alleyways. It's real junky back there, mattresses. This is the same area that Brenda was in when we first seen the episode start off. Now, while he's doing this, Samson is out front, and they're just trying to survey, trying to see if they come up with anything. Now, he does have a photo of Jerry Cooper, and he asks somebody, hey, have you seen him? And they're like, yeah, Jerry Cooper, he's usually in the back. Well, Brenda, she ends up following Alex in the back. And while he's walking, we see her draw her gun, and she fires off some shots. But when we get back here, we discover that Alex isn't hit, but she's laying on the ground in a pool of blood. Samson, they got to make this call. And of course, everyone's going to be looking at Alex like, what the hell did you just do? Alex is going through it. That seems to be the theme of this show. Every time you look up, he's one step closer, but he gets drugged right on back. Well, the lieutenant shows up the next day. He's been drinking. He hasn't showered. Damon had called him out. And the lieutenant is basically saying, well, after our investigation, the gun that she had, all of the bullets, they were messed up. They were defective. So you wouldn't have got shot. Also, we found a letter that instructed her to unalive you, and we found the vehicle. So Alex got off with this because it was self-defense, and he was firing back on a suspect that shot at him. But it just doesn't add up. Who would tamper with a weapon and tell them to kill Alex Cross? When they pulled up to the vehicle, they did the forensics. They went in there. Nothing was too suspicious. But on the inside, there was a map of the graveyard. Now, when they get there, there's nothing going on. But in the tree, there is a dress. And remember, John was the one that came out here to put the flowers on the tombstone. But he said that dress wasn't up there. And that dress doesn't belong to Maria either. When they get back to the office, it just has him wondering, what the heck is going on out here? And then we hear in his brain what's going on. Someone force fed Amir. That place used to be the Egyptian embassy. It used to be an old bank. It used to be a brothel. A brothel? So this has him wondering, wait a minute, if it's a brothel, that means there had to be some hidden places or extra places to hide because you didn't want the police to kick in. Now, we got Ed in his office, and he also on his screen has a video surveillance of Shannon down in 41 Price Street. Now, there's a senator in here, and she basically is shitting on him, saying, oh, when you used to work for me, you used to do this, you used to go get my coffee, blah, blah, blah. But see, Ed, he needs some help, and he actually has a black melon way to get this help done. Now, whoever her husband or this ruse guy is, he's saying, listen. I used to be right next to him in spirit or on camera. And he's telling her, you need to go ahead and get this agenda up and running so I can benefit from it. Or I'll release this footage of this guy with these minors. And the oldest one is only 13 years old. So this has the senator. She's getting up like, all right, I'll get the agenda taken care of for you. So now they show back up to 41 Price Street. Now, of course, they don't have a warrant, but. They don't really need one because the warrant didn't expire. So they show up, but this time they have a sledgehammer because they need to try to find a hidden door 
This used to be a brothel. And if they ever got raided, they needed a back door or an underground door to get out of. They end up finding it in the office behind the wall. They knock it down and there's a spiral staircase, the same staircase that we seen in episode one. So the guy that was in there, he had a tattoo on his wrist, but they knock it down and they go down there. But guess who was down in this basement? That's right. Yeah, this is Ed's basement. But Bobby Trey was down there and he was asking for two point two million dollars to get Shannon up out of there. So no one would ever find out what's going on. But Ed said he would do two point two million. He had to get Shannon and the book. They end up going down into the basement. Well, Bobby had already got out of there with Shannon and he's telling her, listen, shut up. I need to get you out of here because he's trying to get that money. Now, they didn't ran all the way through here. They found the back door. But this is good for their investigation, because as I said before, they were supposed to get the book and Shannon. Bobby Trey was, but he only got Shannon. He didn't have enough time because Ed was on the phone stalling. So when they go back into the book, now they're realizing, oh, we were right. Maurice Freeman Jr., a serial killer, Amir Goodspeed, they look just alike. Now they know who the next woman looks like. They don't know who Shannon is, but they know she matches the lady that's in the book. So this is good for the investigation. Now we do see Bobby Trey and Ed talking. They had a dog in the cage and then they had Shannon in the cage. Just in case anyone's seen something, they would just see the dog in the cage and like, okay, we'll leave it alone. But he doesn't get this 2.2 million because Ed is saying I needed both of them. The lady and the book. So right now, Bobby Trey's going to have to get back out there or he ain't going to get paid. And Ed, he needs that book back. All right, there you go. Episode three, the good book recap is getting spicy or as the young folk would say is heating up out here. Bobby Trey, he got to get this book back. And now we're one step closer to solving all of this. Now, remember, this is only episode three. We got five episodes left. So make sure you tune in tomorrow. 1.30 p.m. Eastern, and we'll have episode four. I'm Mode IJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.